Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the second match of the winner's bracket between Rancor and Jade One, part of BSL Season 13 Hasu League Group B, 9 o'clock location. We have Jade One as the Black Protoss, 12 o'clock location. We have Rancor as the Peach, Pink, that color Zerg. I'm not sure which to uh, label it. This is going to be on Aztec, which I almost... I'm wondering if Jade One is going to opt to be a... To op with aggression this time to open up potentially with a zealot opener given the inverted ramp nature of this map rancor being a more aggressive zerg this feels like a map that is going to lend directly into his play style again because of that inverted ramp of the natural expansion 973 tends to be trouble at large for protoss on any map except revolver these days but this inverted ramp makes it just even stronger. However, if Jedi 1 can win this match, he will advance to the next match. I'm almost curious if he wants to... Realizing that Macro won him the... Well, I guess shenanigans in Macro. But realizing that his Macro was strong last match, if he wants to just try to safe play it, deal with whatever Rancor throws at him, and just try to win a long-term Macro match. I don't know. We'll see. Jedi 1. Moving up that scout. Looks like Overlord has spawned. We're going to see a, I think, an 11 hatch. Drone in position to do so. Forge first opener. Which, keep in mind, is going to open up that possibility of that early Hydralis pressure. Overlord moving in. It is going to see that forge. Rancor now dropping that spawning pool on 11. Jedi One moving in with his probe scout. Going to go ahead and see that 12th hatch in production. Looks like he's already dropped an initial cannon. I'm wondering if this is... I think he can sneak the Nexus here. That is going to slow things down a little bit for him. And he's going to need every edge that he can get. One critical bit, I suppose, is the exposed nature of thirds so if rancor does grab a third base i like the probe stealing the minerals while they can gateway blockading the front door behind that cannon next is there on the front is if rancor does take that third it's a little bit more challenging to create sufficient sim city that you'll typically see in a uh, 973 on other maps it's actually interesting. I almost feel like map makers these days are doing things to either punish or reward that style of play. Lair being morphed at the natural expansion. Let's see if that probe gets boxed out of that scouting information. So everything Rancor's showing is, hey, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go that 973. Potentially. Showing no morph layer here, but the morph layer happening at the natural expansion. Potentially... To go two hatch mutilisk. Usually that is the standard Zerg play in the midst of this. However, he needs to make sure that this probe does not angle back up the ramp to get that scout. Some drones initially looked like they were moving off the line to potentially do so. The probe's staying alive, and it's going to be critical that Jedi One, first of all, takes care of this probe scout in his base and secondarily prevents any additional probe scouts from sneaking out for Jedi One. So the probe down. Layer's just about finished. Cybernetic score warping in. Does Jedi One realize what he's going up against? Next question. Spire morphing in the main. Handful of drones at the natural expansion. And a preventative creep colony on the front door to deny additional scouting. Second cannon being plopped down. So I... All indications are that Jedi One still thinks this might be potentially a 973. Stargate about halfway finished. That The timing on the cannons, and unfortunately for the natural expansion, I don't see a pylon for Jedi One to create a cannon to help defend this natural expansion. And also, going up above this ridge line makes it very difficult for any ground units to assist. Not that that matters as much 
uh, for Protoss players. But Zealot's grouping up, looking for initial Hydralisks. The front door is silent at this stage of things, and I'm wondering if Dreaded One thinks something's up at this stage. He's dropped a Citadel of a Dune before that first Corsair. That is brutal. So the Spire going to finish. This Corsair is going to be later than it might have been otherwise. Still no indications. Okay, a, a pylon being built at that natural expansion. Mutalisks, five Mutalisks in production already. The Zerglings clearing the way a little bit. Just kind of checking things out. Second Gas is up. So Rancor looks like he wants to go for a long-term dedication into Mutalisks in the mid-game. Second Assimilator warping in. The Corsair now moving out. But it's going to move out into a face of Mutalisks engaging it near immediately. And the cannons needed to be warping in before this moment. So now the Corsair sees the Spire, is trying to retreat to home base. The Mutalisks going for a cutoff lane. It's going to get picked off. Rancor with huge advantages here. So the Corsair down. Two cannons at the natural. This might be GG. Photon cannon trying to warp in. Several of them... A Shield battery as well to try to defend. The Mutal is splitting a little bit, not focusing on the cannons or the probes, now trying to trail back. Jedi One doing a good job of harassing the Mutalisks. The cannon knocked down. More Mutalisks are going to be joining the fray momentarily, and now that probe line starting to get assaulted. The shield battery providing a little bit of spare time. Two more cannons warping in. One cannon dies right as it's warping in, I believe. Second Corsair is up. Nice reposition from Rancor on this Mutalisk. I'm looking for more reinforcements here. Now additional Mutalisk rejoining. Another Corsair out. It's going to get picked off. I like the shield battery play to try to salvage the situation. However, they're just getting picked off as they spawn. Now four Mutalisks remain in the line, continuing to assail the probe lines. More Mutalisks joining, and I think this might be GG right here. The Zealots moving out, clearing a handful of uh, units there. Three clock base has been taken. Going to try to force the Mutalisks back to deal with the Zealots on this line. A Dragoon now joining, but so many resources have been ex expended in the form of cannons and Corsairs that Rancor, in a pretty sizable situation, well, pretty good lead. But Jedi One really making a match of it. Three Mutalists remaining at home base. The Zealots trying to march in that natural expansion. It looks like they're engaging that Sutton Colony instead. Probes continuing to get picked off here at the main. Rancor having trouble macroing behind this. He's actually uh, still holding a bank. He's actually behind in overall count. Now he's backing off those mules with the damage done. Three, three clock base is up. Zelt's going to get wiped out. Still nothing at the main to help defend this. He can just regroup and probably re-enter. With sufficient mules to just flat out end it. And honestly, I don't know that he needs to go to the main to do it. He can probably just bust the front. So yeah, regrouping with this. The Zergling's going to flood forward. Yeah, just going for a straight-up kill on the front door. Corsair wandering up. No shield battery to support, so it's not long for life. And Zerglings have now breached that natural expansion. Another Corsair moving up. That cannon's down. Zerglings free attacking this natural... A Dark Templar attempting to be built, but that Overlord moving in position to go ahead and deal with that. Probes flooding out of that natural. And now it is three bases versus just one producing base. And Mulus are still hanging out over that natural. Double Stargate to try to continue to produce troops in the midst of this. There's that Dark Templar trying to sneak out. The Zerglings are being left to go ahead and deal with this. It's eating a decent amount of damage. An Overlord should already... Yeah, it looks like it's already positioned to deal with this. There's no Overlord coverage. Sorry, there is an Overlord at that 3 o'clock base, but after losing everything at the natural, I don't think Jedi One has a winning option in the midst of this. Still holding on, wants to make a game of it. The Mutalisks devastating everything. I don't... Here's the thing, he's... Between the Mutalisks and the Zerglings, he's going to have his work cut out for him just defending air, let alone potential ground. Jedi one down to 33 supply in the red. More Zerglings flooding out. I think that Dark Templar died someplace in the midst of this as a bit of an overthought. Rancor 
just trying to micro Mulisks, find a gap in the defense and peck away at it. More Zerglings moving their way forward. We do have an Archon now, which helps in that anti-air. Rancor may be getting a little bit too aggressive here. It looks like a Corsair is going to be able to get an Overlord. He can go ahead and macro like crazy. He was in the red briefly. He can go ahead and macro behind this and just kind of camp his Mulisks at that natural expansion and say, okay, yeah, Jedi One, what's your play from here? Probe moving out again. There are four Corsair. However, Carapace One is up, which really negates their anti air abilities. However, with Archon support, that is going to force them back. Able to soften that up a lot. Zergling was able to get a probe kill and clear out that pylon between this. Mules continuing to attack. I'm almost wondering if Rancor is actually dedicating a little bit too much attention to the front door in the midst of this. I don't think that's going to be sufficient to allow Jedi One to get back in this match. Does have Lair. He's got Hydralisk. He's got range. Looks like he wants to just finish this up kind of rapidly by doing his characteristic aggressive style. Get a round of Hydralisks out there to just finish it. Still poking at the perimeter. Overlord speed now online. A lot of Hydralisks being built. And yeah, just a one, honestly, one control group of Hydralisks and that's game. Because the only de defense on the front door is this Archon, which granted has, has tasted blood, has two Zergling kills. But Hydralisks are not Zerglings. Hydralisks are not Zerglings. There's your tautology for the day. Mulisks picking off that High Templar, happy to sacrifice their lives for the cause. The Corsairs are just going to have to watch as the Mutalists move in. Corsairs trying to shift to the north. Several of them getting picked off. There's GG from Jedi One. Jedi One trying to, uh, yeah, be frustrating. Maybe to create a delayed game, create a bit of fatigue for game three. But now the turnaround, Rancor being more creative and winning game two. We'll move on to game three. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.